Hello everyone, welcome to the Stalwart Initiative. Today we're back with our the, the last review of our subclasses from Unearthed Arcana 2020 subclasses revisited. And we're here today with the wizard subclass Order of the Scribes, or Order of Scribes. Uh, this was originally a um, artificer subclass, the Archivist, and has since changed to the wizard subclass Order of the Scribes. I think it's a great move. Uh, it, this this does retain a little bit of features from the Archivist, but reimagined as the Order of the Scribes, and it is the most wizardy wizard out there for 5e. So uh, this is a I think this is a great improvement. Thank you, Wizards of the Coast, for taking uh, our feedback and having these on Arthur Canna's truly beneficial because this is I, I enjoy this much more than the archivist not that i didn't enjoy the archivist just slightly different reasons than this so let's go ahead and take a look so the at the order order of the scribe and you get this at second level when you pick your arcane tradition magic of the book that's what many spellcasters call wizardry the name is apt given how much time wizards spend pouring pouring okay pouring over their spell books, penning theories about the nature of magic, and exploring the farthest recesses of libraries. It's rare to see a wizard traveling without books and scrolls sprouting from their bags, and a wizard would go to great lengths to plumb an archive of ancient knowledge. Among wizards, the Order of the Scribes is the most bookish. It takes many forms in different worlds, but its primary mission is the same everywhere, recording magical discoveries in tomes and scrolls, so that, so that wizardry can flourish. And while every wizard values their spellbook, a scribe in the Order of Scribes dedicates themselves to magically awakening their book, turning it into a trusted companion. All wizards study their spellbooks, but a wizardly scribe talks to theirs. I, I like this already. This is, oh, thematically, this is very cool. Very cool. And uh, I'm surprised it wasn't one of the original the original schools, but I understand they had to establish the whole schools of magic and all that jazz. I get it, I get it. But I'm glad we, we might be getting it now, because this looks very cool. So at second level, you get Wizardly Quill. As a bonus action, you can magically create a tiny quill in your freehand. The magic quill has the proper the following properties. The quill doesn't require ink. When you write with it, it produces ink in a color of your choice on the writing surface. I would change that freely to gradient rainbow colors. As I'm signing stuff. Whatever. Uh, the golden time you must spend to copy a spell in your spell book are halved if you use the quill for the transcription. Very cool. Very cool. Save you um, yeah, save you time and money. So very good. Especially at those lower levels, the gold costs can be pretty brutal depending on how much you're, you're getting spells to put in your book. So you can erase anything you write with the quill if you wave the feather over the text as a bonus action, provided the text is within five feet of you. This quill disappears if you create another one or if you die. So this last part here, this uh, you can erase anything if you wave it over. That could be super useful. So you're using your quill, your magic quill, to write up a, a contract, a document. And uh, you get the other party to sign it or whatever, and then you just take your... You take your feather over it, erase part of it, and rewrite it. Oh, the RP implications there could be fantastic. So... Already at second level, um, looking pretty good. There's just a lot of flavorful stuff, a lot of RP stuff. Uh, let's see what else we get at second level. So uh, at second level, we get the main feature here, the Awakened Spellbook. Using specially prepared inks and ancient incantations passed down by your wizardly order, you've awakened an arcane sentience within your spellbook. While you're holding the book, it grants you the following benefits. You can use the book as a spellcasting focus for your wizard spells. Makes sense. Duh. When you cast a wizard spell with a spell slot, you can temporarily replace its damage type with the damage type of another spell in your spellbook, as your spellbook magically alters the spell's formula for this casting. That is awesome. That is great. No more, no more need for chromatic orb. Um, this is this is an awesome feature. So anytime you use, um, let's say you have a uh, burning. Let's say you want to use Burning Hands, and you have another cold, uh, a cold spell. You can turn Burning Hands into, f you know, Frost Hands or Frost Cone. Well, Mini Frost Cone. Um, yeah, this is just so many things you can change around with this. And it makes you, it's not a huge combat thing. It doesn't, like, 
It doesn't necessarily boost your damage on a regular basis, but it makes you more adaptable to what you're fighting. So you're, you know, you're fighting something that's that is vulnerable to fire, then you can just switch it up and turn one of your other spells into a fire spell. You know, it's very versatile. I like that. And especially something combat related for this wizardly order is very nice to have because it is um it's it's more book centric but uh, but does have some nice surprises up its sleeve. Let's take a look at what else here at level 2. When you cast a wizard spell as a ritual, you can use the spell's normal casting time rather than adding 10 minutes to it. Once you use this benefit, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. So this is great. Once per long rest, when you ritually cast something, er, you know, nobody wants to wait around uh, for 10 minutes while you're fiddling around trying to cast these um, these ritual spells once per long rest. You don't have to do that. You can cast that as normal. Most of them are normally uh, action spells anyway. And um, yeah, this will cut that time down. Your party will appreciate it. <laughs> and you will as well. And you get that for free once per long rest. Uh, if necessary, you can replace the book over the course of a short rest by using your wizardly quill to write arcane sigils in a blank book or a magic spell book to which you're attuned. I'm glad they put that caveat in there. One that you're attuned, not just anybody's book. At the end of at the end of the rest, your spell book's consciousness is summoned into the new book, which the consciousness transforms into your spell book along with all the sp uh, all its spells, which is important. If the previous book still exists somewhere, all the spells vanish from its pages. This is really this is a really great feature. So, you now have a sentient book. Granted it, it can't really do anything on its own, but it does have a sentience and you are connected with it. And uh, this is great. So if you lose your spell book, somebody takes it from you. Because as a DM, what's better to do than run into a situation where somebody takes the wizard's spell book or something happens to them? Temporarily, you don't wanna, you know, don't want don't wanna make it too brutal on them. But but in this instance it's okay, fine, I'll I'll make a new one. You know, and you have your consciousness transfer into a new book, and you regain all your spells, and the book that they have of yours, your old book, is useless. This is a spell book anyway. Don't waste the paper. Don't waste the paper though. Uh, so that's what you get at second level, liking it already. At sixth level, you get Master Scrivener. Whenever you finish a long rest, you can create one magic scroll by touching your wizardly quill to a blank piece of paper or parchment and causing one spell from your awakened spell book to be copied onto the scroll. The spell book must be within five feet of you when you make the scroll. The chosen spell must be of first or second level and must have a casting time of one action. Once in the scroll, the spell's power is enhanced, counting as one level higher than normal. You can cast the spell from the scroll by reading it as an action. The scroll is unintelligible to anyone else, and the spell vanishes from the scroll when you cast it or when you finish your next long rest. You're also adept at crafting spell scrolls, which are described in Chapter 7 of the Dungeon Master's Guide. The gold and time you must spend to make such a scroll is halved if you use your wizardly quill. So, you're better at making sc spell scrolls. That's nice. But, uh, but man, this feature is great. So, you're able to make a, make a free scroll by just having a piece of paper or parchment once per long rest, and it can be first or second level of any of your spells, and it uh, it's upcast another level, so that's good, that's good as well, especially if you're doing damage, or if the spell allows you to add additional people on, on it as part of upcasting. So, very cool, super useful. I kind of wish it would scale a little bit, you know, maybe third level, like, not very well, it doesn't have to go up very high, but that would be cool if you can get third and possibly fourth level spells with this uh, later on. But, uh, but I, it's still super useful, and yeah. The fact you can upcast it is, is great. So, and nobody else, nobody else can read it. So that that's also fantastic. Nobody's got to get a hold of your your spells and do something nefarious with it. Very very cool. And let's see. At level ten, you get manifest mind. You are now able to conjure forth the mind of your awakened spellbook. As a bonus action, while the spell uh, spellbook is on your person, you can cause the mind to manifest as a tiny spectral construct hovering in an unoccupied space of your choice within 60 feet of you. This presence is intangible and doesn't occupy its space, and it sheds dim light in a 10-foot radius. It looks like a ghostly tome, a cascade of text, or a scholar from the past. Your choice. The spectral mind has a number of hit points equal to your wizard level, 
plus your intelligence modifier, and it uses your armor class and saving throw modifiers. Uh, while manifested, the Spectral Mind can hear and see, and it has dark vision with a range of 60 feet. As an action, you can hear and see using its senses instead of your own. Uh, until you, your concentration ends, as if concentrating on a spell, whenever you cast a wizard spell on your turn, you can cast it as if you were in the Spectral Mind space instead of, your, instead of your own, using its senses. You can do so a number of times per day, equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. As a bonus action, you can cause the Spectral Mind to hover up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space that you or it can see. It can pass through creatures, but not objects. The Spectral Mind stops manifesting if it is ever more than 300 feet away from you, if it drops to zero hit points, if you die, or if you dismiss it as a bonus action. This is a uh, fantastically useful um, upgrade to the Find Familiar. Uh, the, only, the only part is I wish that the, this Manifest Mind feature came in earlier than 10th level, because this is... Like, this is the main draw here. This is great. Uh, I just really hate to get it so... A lot of a lot of campaigns don't even run to 10th level, so that sucks that you won't get to use this in a lot of instances, but it's a great feature. Uh, so your, you know, your conscious mind of, uh, of your spellbook is now able to actually do stuff. Man uh, it manifests its mind as, um, as this little, this little uh, spectral thing, and... Yeah, you can cast spells with it, or through it, you can see through it, you can... It's, it's just super useful, and it has more uh, more use later on as well. So, I really like this feature, one of the main features of this subclass. I just wish you got it earlier. Let's move on to check out our 14th level. Uh, one with the word. Your connection to your Awakened Spellbook has become so profound that your soul has become intertwined with it. While you are holding the book and its spectral mind is manifest, you can take an action to cause the two of you to teleport, swapping places. You can teleport in this way a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Moreover, if you die but at least one spell remains in your awakened spellbook, you can return to life one minute later within five feet of the book. You revive with one hit point, then roll 3d6, the book loses spells of your choice that have a combined spell level equal to that roll uh, or higher. For example, if the roll's total is 9, spells vanish from the book that have a combined level or at least 9, of at least 9, which could mean one ninth level spell, three third level spells, or some other combination. Thereafter, you are incapable of casting the lost spells even if you find them on a scroll or in another spell book. The only way to restore your ability to cast one of the lost spells is through the wish spell, which can restore one spell to the book per casting. Uh, this is this is a lot to take in. I I really like this feature. So at 14th level, you're uh, you're getting up there. At 13th level, your proficiency bonus goes up. So you can use this. Uh, you can do the teleport feature f uh, four times per day when you um, when you get this when you get this feature at 14th level, and yeah, that's great. The, the whole teleporting thing is great. Now, this essentially makes you... Um, yeah, it, it, it makes it very easy for you to come back from the dead. Because all you have to do is have one uh, one spell in your spell book. Now, granted, you're going to lose 3d6 three di three worth, um, worth of spell levels. That sucks. And the fact that you can't learn them again except for the wish spell, that really sucks. But... As long as you have one spell in there, you will come back. You will be revived, and your spell book isn't completely annihilated. So this this could save your butt quite a few times, and um, yeah, could cost you quite dearly <laughs> quite a few times in your spell book. So yeah, very cool, very cool spell, or very cool feature, and yeah, the um, it gives you a little blurb down here, you know, the, about them switching from the archivist uh, to the order of scribes. So, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, how do you feel about the Switch? I know I was, I'm really looking forward to um, to Artificer subclasses, but, but then again, this feels better. This feels more appropriate. So, yeah, 
Sword of Scribes Wizard. Thank you so much for joining me. Everyone have a fantastic day, and I'll see all of you next time.